Coming up on today's Airborne, SpaceX's Grasshopper reaches new heights, living life as a Martian, and taking on the North Pole in a Pipistrel Virus SW. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Grasshopper continues to grow its space legs. SpaceX has released a new video showing another successful flight of its Grasshopper VTOL vehicle. And every time they fly the rocket, they go exponentially higher. On March 7th, the Grasshopper flew to 262 feet. This latest leap topped out at 820, or triple the previous altitude, according to SpaceX. Grasshopper hovered, standing on its plume of flame for a few seconds, before making a controlled descent back to the pad from which it had launched less than a minute previously. It touched down gently and the flame extinguished. SpaceX has not yet released detailed data from the flight. Grasshopper, SpaceX's vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, continues SpaceX's work towards one of its key goals, developing fully and rapidly reusable rockets a feat that will transform space exploration by radically reducing its cost. With Grasshopper, SpaceX engineers are testing the technology that would enable a launched rocket to land intact rather than burning up upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. So how would you like to live the rest of your life on Mars? Dutch entrepreneur Bas Landsdorp has set a very ambitious goal to establish a human colony on Mars by the year 2023. But you have to really, really want to go because the colonist will not be returning to Earth. Landsdorp has created the Mars One Foundation, which reports that it has already received some 10,000 expressions of interest from over 100 countries in being a part of that first Martian colony. A four-step online application selection process is now open, and visitors to MarsOne.com can review applications and rate each applicant on a scale of 1 to 5. Mars One says it is looking for applicants who are both mature and interesting. Test pilots are no longer top astronaut candidates, as Mars One officials say they are more interested in those who play well with others. Experienced long-distance pilot, biologist, and photographer Mateus Lenarchik is off again on another adventure. Flying a Pipistrel Virus SW aircraft, he plans to record black carbon readings over the Arctic. Mateus departed Monday, and his route of flight will take him from Slovenia to the North Pole, crossing from Europe to Canada and back, crossing the Atlantic via the Lindbergh route, he plans to capture the Arctic with aerial images. To fulfill all of Mateus's requirements, Pipistrel built a specially modified double NASA Challenge winner, the Virus SW. The aircraft must safely operate at low polar temperatures and high altitudes. The fuel consumption must remain at very low levels, as some stages of the flight are several thousand miles long and the amount of fuel on board of such a small aircraft is very limited. On his path, Mateus will attempt to burn the smallest amount of fuel per distance flown. The project will show how light aircraft can be used to collect significant scientific climate data, as the aircraft will be carrying a device developed by the company Aerosol, which measures the concentration of atmospheric aerosol or black carbon in the air over the North Pole, which has never been done before. The results will contribute to understanding the effects of global warming. The House Appropriations Transportation Subcommittee heard testimony from FAA Administrator Michael Huerta on Wednesday, but it did little to convince some members of the committee that cuts in staffing that are causing airport delays and other issues were the only available option. Huerta said again that he and the agency had been warning since February that the cuts would cause problems with air traffic control and that it had done all it could do to minimize the impact. But the New York Times reports that some of the panel, mainly Republicans like Hal Rogers, were very skeptical of the administration's explanations and suggested that the cuts were politically motivated. 
But New York Democrat Nita Lowy said that the FAA should not be blamed for Congress's failure. Huerta was also cautioned by members of both parties that the effects of the sequester would not magically disappear on September 30th. They said that Huerta's cancellation of an entire class of air traffic control recruits at the agency's training facility could mean shortages of controllers in later years. It's not just the jet demonstration teams that the sequester has grounded. The U.S. Navy's precision parachute team, the Leapfrogs, has officially canceled its entire performance schedule for the rest of 2013, citing budget cuts due to sequestration. The team performed at about 30 events in 2012. The Fort Bragg patch reports that the team had some innovative ideas planned for its 2013 performances, including helmet-mounted videos and the use of wingsuits. Audiences could have seen the skydiver's perspective on big screens as they came back to the ground. All of this is now on hold. Mass communications specialist First Class Fletcher Gibson told the website that, quote, it's pretty much fully impacted our schedule, just like the other performance teams like the Blue Angels and the Golden Knights for the Army, end quote. He said that if Congress suddenly changed its mind and made the funds available, the team was ready to go. Meanwhile, like other teams, the Leapfrogs will continue to train. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird flight simulations as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop us an email to news spy at aero news.net. Beechcraft was handed another loss in its effort to legally challenge the award of an Air Force LAS contract to Embraer and its U.S. partner, Sierra Nevada Corporation. Last Friday, the U.S. Court of Federal Claims denied the Kansas Plainmakers' attempt to force the USAF to stop work on 20 A-29 Super Tucanos set to be built by Embraer and SNC in Jacksonville, Florida. The contract is still under review by the Government Accountability Office, but the Air Force has bypassed a stop work order on the airplanes, saying they are critical for operations in Afghanistan. Beechcraft filed the suit last month, according to a report from Wichita television station KAKE. Beechcraft said in a statement that it reluctantly accepts the court's opinion. But, quote, we will continue to contest this award through the GAO and as a program with a record for building partnership capacity with other nations that desire light air support aircraft, we remain committed to providing a superior aircraft for this mission that also protects national security interests, taxpayer dollars, and preserves jobs in the U.S. aerospace manufacturing sector, end quote. A number of people, especially those on Capitol Hill, are troubled by the announced breakdown of the 5% cut in the FAA's budget and the included furloughing of thousands of air traffic controllers. Among them is the chair of the House Transportation Committee, which oversees the agency, Congressman Bill Schuster. Schuster has issued a strongly worded statement blasting the agency's management of the sequester mandated budget cuts, saying, quote, the FAA's management of sequestration is quickly going from bad to worse. Given that the FAA's budget increased more than 100% over the last 15 years, finding 5% in savings 
should it need to significantly impact our nation's aviation operations. Businesses and families across the country face these issues in their budgets every day without massive impacts. We know that the FAA has the flexibility to reduce costs elsewhere, such as contracts, travel, supplies, and consultants or to apply furloughs in a manner that better protects the most critical air traffic control facilities. Yet, rather than take this approach, the administration has made choices that appear designed to have the greatest possible impact on the traveling public." End quote. According to Schuster, there are $2.7 billion in non-personnel operation costs that should be examined before FAA personnel are furloughed. Panchito, a B-25, which is often seen at air shows around the country, was damaged during the sun and fun fly-in at Lakeland Linder Regional Airport last weekend. And police are hoping someone has evidence that will help them catch the culprit. A deep scratch about 18 inches long appeared on a section of the airplane a little over six feet off the ground, sometime between 1800 Saturday and 0900 Sunday. The Tampa Bay Tribune reports that the plane had been parked near the beer tent. The World War II vintage bomber is part of the DAV Airshow Outreach Program, which is dedicated to increasing public awareness about disabled veterans. The plane's owners, who participate at Lakeland each year, estimate the cost to repair the damage will be about $30,000. Lakeland police said they hoped someone might have a photo or video of the damage being inflicted on the airplane and are offering a cash reward for such evidence. Sometimes it's good to be a royal. Prince William plans to hang up his flight helmet following his current tour of duty at RAF Valley in Ainsley, North Wales. Because of the contract he signed when he entered training to be a helicopter pilot, he would normally owe the government the equivalent of $609,360 for early retirement. However, the RAF has reportedly decided that they will forgive the bill in the interest of the nation. This according to a report in the UK newspaper, The Mirror. According to a senior RAF source, the service feels that, quote, the education of the future king in military matters is hugely important to the nation." End quote. Prince William may continue to wear an RAF uniform for three years, but not be on active flying duty. His training is valued at a little over $1.2 million. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And please join us again next Tuesday for another edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.